Now, Chris, hope you had a great fourth. Uh, how much of a shot do you give the Bucks if they don't have Giannis here? Very little, if any. I'm picking Phoenix either way, whether Giannis plays or not. I think what we'll see is Giannis at some point in the series, maybe game three, something like that. Uh, but let's say if Giannis plays the entire way uh, or even comes back for game three and is good the rest of the way, I give Phoenix about a 40% chance. If he doesn't play at all, I mean, I'm, I'm tempted to go zero, but I'm going to go 5% just because you can never say never. Now, clearly, I'm not overreacting to two games against an Atlanta team that was essentially playing without his best player. One game, obviously, Trey Young was out completely. The second game, he clearly wasn't able to be himself. So I'm not here to talk about, oh, Milwaukee is great without Giannis and they're fine. <laughs> a lot of people are making a big deal without Drew Holiday, about Drew Holiday. He's been unleashed. Charles Barkley even used the word unleashed. Well, Drew played great in the two games without Giannis. But Drew played great in games one and two as well with Giannis. He had 33 points, 10 assists in game one, 22 and seven in game two. In those two games, he shot like 58, 59% from the field. My point is this. He can play that well with Giannis. Giannis does not hinder Drew Holiday. So what that tells us is we're going to get the same kind of inconsistent play from Drew Holiday. Yeah, his numbers overall will probably be better, especially points, just because he's got to score at this point. But I don't think he's going to be this consistent superstar without Giannis. Same thing for Chris Middleton. I think there's this feeling now that, oh, he's going to be, you know, 25 to 35 points every night mm -mm. now that Giannis is there. Did you <laughs> see him in the last two games? Well, he's going to be the same roller coaster ride that he is. All right. He, yes, he was great in those two games. But he, you look at the regular season, they played 11 games without Giannis, and Chris Middleton was up and down. He had a six for 27 game. 14 points against Dallas. He had a four for 16 game, 16 points against Sacramento, both without Giannis. So it's not like he's going to, you know, just save the day because now Giannis isn't there. Brooke Lopez, yeah, very good against Atlanta. Obviously wasn't dominant in game six, but he was good. He's not going to be able to have his way with DeAndre Ayton the way he did with Clint Capella in Atlanta. Now, Capella's a great defender, but he's smaller. Like, Ayton is a legit 6'11", 7 feet. He's longer. He's a little bigger. He's more athletic than Capella or anybody Atlanta had. So, Brooks going to have trouble there. Look, Giannis was great against Phoenix in the regular season. I know it was only two games. But he averaged 40. That's the most that he averaged against any team in the league that they played more than once. And the key, he got to the free throw line 15 and a half times a game against Phoenix. So they clearly had trouble with him. He Somehow he shot 83% from the line in those games. We know he wouldn't do that in the finals. But still, that shows the trouble that Giannis presented for Phoenix. So, yeah, I, I'm not buying into, oh, they can, they're better without Giannis and they got a better shot of beating Phoenix. Five, I'll up it to 10, five to 10 percent without Giannis. I, I agree with you. Um, I think it'll be a great series, but it's hard for someone to win a series um, without their best player. Uh, now, we saw um, the Clippers play very, very well without Kawhi. And I know if they'd had Kawhi, I believe they'd have beat the Suns. We saw them finish off Utah without Kawhi. Um, so they didn't really need Kawhi, the Clippers did in that series. But you said something very interesting. You talk about true holiday these last two games. I remember in the first five games against the Nets. And no one, nobody talking about true holiday, true holiday being unleashed when he was shooting six or 25. Don't, nobody mentioned that. We know what Chris Middleton is. We watched him last year in the bubble without Giannis go get 50, Chris. 
We watched him without Giannis. You know, he go get 20 points in the uh, what 20 points in the fourth quarter against Atlanta and steal back home court. We watched him go get 23 points the, the other night in the third quarter. So we know he has this in him. The difference between he and Giannis is that I trust him with the ball in his hands late in the ball game because he will take and make big shots. That overtime game against the Brooklyn Nets, it was him that really sealed it, Skip, taking that last shot. But without Giannis, somebody got to get, get those 22 to 25 shots. So you would like to think it's going to be divvied up between Holiday, between Middleton, or uh, Bobby Porter gets into the ball game. Brooke Lopez take his 7-foot-1, 300-pound butt down on the block and start hovering around like a draw on the three-point line, he can ha add some value to that. Even P.J. Tucker got 10 shots in Giannis' his absence. Hmm. So somebody has to get those shots, and the point gets divvied up. Maybe Holiday gets an extra three to four points a game. Maybe Middleton gets an extra six. So for me, can they win? I have Phoenix like you to win this series, even with Giannis. I say it's a very minimal chance that without Giannis, they can beat the Suns in the best of seven. I just don't see it happening. I just don't see it happening. Mm. So, I have a question for both of you. Yes. What is the history of Giannis through his playoff career in big moments, big stage, big games? What, what's his history? Well, you know he's like a wet firecracker. Thank you. Know, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. It's up in smoke, down in flames, one after another after another. What was his recent history? The last we saw of him, he's shooting two air balls from the free throw line and another air ball from the three-point <laughs> yes. line. Takes the heart out of your team, takes the hope out of your team. It embarrasses everybody. It makes everybody uncomfortable with a superstar that you're trying to depend on and you can't depend on him. You can't really trust him in the biggest moments. Is he sensationally talented? Obviously, he's yeah. won MVP. <laughs> he, he's the PER prince of the league. We get that. In a vacuum, are they better without? Obviously, they're not better without Giannis. But what did your eye test tell you? Without him in the last two games, the ball moved. Yeah. All of a sudden, guys who have made all star teams started playing like all stars. Mm -hmm. They felt like maybe they're not unleashed, but they're empowered, they're emboldened right. to be themselves, to, to be the best they can be. And I got to tell you, something's going on with Chris Middleton because he had two breakouts away from Milwaukee, right. which he'd never done before. He's always been a disaster on the road and an all-star at home. Skip, he was due. Did you see what he, the two stinkers that he laid at home to open the series? There are very few men on this planet <laughs> capable in a playoff game of scoring 20 points in a fourth quarter and 23 points as he did Saturday evening in the third quarter. It's such an explosion, and it, it, it doesn't look that sensational. He's not made for highlights. It's, it's pretty orthodox, right. conventional, just jump right. shooting, and it just goes in. And as I told Shannon earlier in the show, he's just boring. It, it, you can't wrap your arm around <laughs> right. him. There are no edges to him. He's not funny or entertaining in his postgame interviews. He just shoots conventional jump shots. And by the way, they, they go in. Right. Lately, they've been going in like rain right. falling. And all of a sudden, I'm saying, well, wait a second. If he could have one of those games or even one of those quarters at Phoenix in games one or two, right. are they capable of stealing one? Yes, they're capable of stealing one of those games because Holiday is suddenly playing like an all-star, and he's doing it on both ends of the floor. Yes, well, he you can, have to. Well, he is, and I assume he's going to take Chris Paul, and I assume Middleton and maybe Tuck will go back and forth on Booker well, some, but – that they can defend at, at a high level on the perimeter with three guys. Right. Well, that'll match up yeah. with Phoenix, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you say about Brooke Lopez. You can say he's old and slow. But just a year ago, he made second team all defense. And just a year ago, he was second in the league in block shots. And just Saturday night, he blocked three more shots of Atlanta's. And if you look, he played 37 minutes, and he was a plus 25. They more than doubled anybody in plus minus on his own team. Well, it just shows you his impact was significant in the minutes that he did play on Saturday night. Well, he's going to have to play that minute, okay? and he's going to have to play it. like he did in game five because DeAndre Ayton's going to be running. Okay, I got it. But it, maybe DeAndre can outrun him from end oh, to end. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. doubt about that. Right. But as far as just camping in the line, lane and dominating the paint against Brooke Lopez, I don't think you can do it. 
He is 7'1", and he's long and strong, and he's thick, and he does weigh close to 300 right. pounds. So I think he will cause some problems for DeAndre Ayton that Big Zoo didn't cause in the last series or the small ball lineup of the Clippers didn't cause. But would you concede that Zoo is a better rebounder than Brooke Lopez? Yeah. And that was one of the things that gave them an advantage is that when they kept the rebounding totals close, they were able to beat. They were able to beat the Clippers. Yeah, but look at at the other guys rebounding on this team. They they rebound like Bobby Porter's can rebound like yeah, oh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And listen, Holiday's been rebounding at the highest level. He almost had a triple double the other night, twenty seven nine and nine. And Tuck, whew, he flies in. He he's been around ten rebounds every game. So, th so they make up for whatever Brooke doesn't do as a rebounder. Brook, listen, Brook can rim protect like crazy. Well, so. if, 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 if I'm Chris, if I'm if I'm Phoenix, I'm like giving Chris Paul a break on defense. I'm going to let him guard P.J. Tucker. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let him guard Tucker. Tucker just going to stand in the corner and shoot threes. Okay. So I'm going to uh, let Tucker. Okay. I'm going to either let Chris Paul or Book guard him. Right. Now, Jay Crowder and Mikael Bridges, okay, y'all got Holiday and y'all got uh, 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 Middleton. Yep. Y'all need to shut them down. Okay. So my takeaway from this is, if by chance Milwaukee steals game one or two, and I think there's a real good chance, that's just me, of that happening, and then to Chris's point, if they go home and Giannis says, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. Right. Whew, you want to talk about pressure on Giannis? Because w if, if you lose a game at home with Giannis coming back, people are going to go berserk over that one. Well, especially if you, if you won one without him and yeah. then you lose when he comes back. What I'm saying. That's what people said about Chris Paul. Remember, mm -hmm. Skip? They won two games with, they the, with him, and then they come, Skip, uh, uh, Chris, and they lose two or three with, uh, with him. And they went two without him and then lose. Somebody on Undisputed was campaigning for they, campaign <laughs> to get more runs. Yes. To play more minutes. <laughs> you got to get pace. Chris Paul out of there. Well, look. Go ahead, Chris. I don't think I don't think it's a route without Giannis. Like I think Milwaukee did show that they can be a good team and they can be effective without him. Like I think they could push Phoenix to six games, even if Giannis doesn't play. Like I don't think this is going to be a blowout and it's not going to be competitive and any of that. But if you look at the three best players on Phoenix versus the three best players on Milwaukee, I I'm taking Phoenix, obviously, right? I mean, you're taking uh, Chris Paul over Drew Holiday. I, I would take Devin Booker over Chris Middleton. I mean, some people might disagree about that, but I would take DeAndre Ayton over Brooke Lopez as well. And uh, Skip, the name is funny. When you were talking about Chris Middleton, the name that came to my mind was Alex English. Yeah, okay. You're kind of boring. Yeah, he is. Not kind of, yeah. very boring. Just a jump shooter, but gets you 25 points. But let me ask you a question. You say with Brooke Lopez, if Giannis is in the mix, Giannis, Holiday, Middleton, are you still taking the Suns three over the Bucks three? Because it's a lot closer than I think people realize. No, look, beginning of the year or even beginning of, certainly beginning of the year, but beginning of the playoffs, if you had said it's going to be Milwaukee and Phoenix, I was <laughs> taking Milwaukee. You you <laughs> I think most people would have taken Milwaukee. You know, but I, I just saw, I think they had some problems in the in the playoffs that I didn't foresee. And I, I think Phoenix is the better team right now. And then Giannis, look, I, I don't know, Shannon, if you ever had a hyperextended knee, but, mm -hmm. you know, obviously that could limit him. That Euro step he loves to do, is he going to yep. be able to do that? You know, with that hyperextended knee, will he Does be he limited to kind of straight line? Right. That's, we might not see Giannis at, he might be 60%, 70%. So um, I, I think that I'm going with Phoenix all the way. But, yeah, if Giannis can come back and play well, even if, Skip, if they split those first two games and he's back for game three, you got to love it if you're Milwaukee. Um, but I, I think Phoenix is the better team. Mm. We go yeah, you'd love it for Milwaukee until you lose game three at home. With Giannis? Yeah. yeah. Here, the thing about Giannis, and you're absolutely right about his play in the clutch, right? There's no, I mean, we you can't you can't count on him. We know that Middleton is their go-to guy, yeah. But there's 45 minutes before that, and he's great for those 45 minutes, yeah. And that keeps you in the game and can set it up for Middleton to do his thing at the end of the game. I don't trust Milwaukee. They play dumb basketball. They got up. <laughs> think about it. They got up 45 threes. 
they got a decided advantage inside, and they still got up 45-3. So they'll let well, if they get out to a lead, they'll let they'll let the Suns back mm -hmm. in it by jacking up threes, and the mm -hmm. Suns will surely get back into the ball game. Mm -hmm. I got the Suns in six. All right, good to know. Good to know. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.